Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Thank you, Brother Buford. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's a privilege to stand before you in a little bit different atmosphere, a little bit different uh, purpose to break with you the bread of life. Praise God. And as Buf Brother Buford said, I don't have to remind you that he's here. He's here. And we're so appreciative of that. It's good to see my most faithful fans, my wife, little girls. I'd like to ask my wife to stand and leave a word of testimony. Praise God. Would you stand with me? Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. Beginning with verse 27. <laughs> and it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God. And keep it. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign. There shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater then Jonas is here. Can we look to the Lord and ask his blessing of the word today? Father, we thank you for the word that thou hast given to us. It is the words of eternal life. We ask you today that you would anoint it, that you would use it according to your divine purpose. All things work together. Lord, we place our full trust and confidence in you. Thank you. Praise God. And may the Lord bless you. You may be seated. I want to preach to you the sign of Jonas. The sign of Jonas. The Lord Jesus pointed out to these to whom he spoke that this is an evil generation. Why? Because they seek a sign. They seek a sign. But his reply to them was that no sign shall be given but one. And that is the sign of Jonas the prophet. And within the course of the next few verses of scripture. Jesus spoke I feel to three classes of people. He spoke to them of three classes of people and he spoke to three classes of people. And for the next few moments this morning or this afternoon, I would like to talk to you and share with you those three classes of people. First of all, he spoke of those who, though they did not believe, yet they would give their consideration. And the verse that he used, the words that he used to bring it together 
And to describe that situation was in verse 31 when he said, The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And I turn today to 1 Kings chapter 10, and we will read a few verses there about the story of a woman known as the Queen of Sheba. And this queen had heard a tremendous, fantastic story about a man called Solomon and all of his wealth and wisdom. But in her hearing of that, she questioned it. Very frankly, she did not believe it. But there is one thing that we can admire about her. She did not rule out the possibility of it. She did not say no to it until she for herself made the journey to find out for herself. Reading with verse 1, chapter 10 of the first Kings, And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. She didn't believe it. And she was going to put him to the test. But she came nonetheless. And when she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, that with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones, and when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all of her questions. And there was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom, when she had seen the house that he had built, when she had seen the meat of his table, and all of the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. That does not mean that she was dead, but rather that within her the spirit of question, the spirit of doubt that was within her when she came, it was dispersed to the four winds. The spirit of doubt was gone. She had no more spirit within her to be contentious. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. She heard, but she did not believe. She heard, but she did not believe. And this world is full of people this afternoon that hear but don't believe that they hear the words, they know the story, but yet they have not believed. Some of you are from the grand state of Missouri. That's the show me state. They have proclaimed, I've got to see it to believe it. Well, that's not unusual. There's a lot of folks in the world like that today. The other states didn't just, they just didn't get that term first. You've got to show me if you want me to believe it. Well, this was the way that the Queen of Sheba was about it. But the thing that I admire about her was that when she went, even though she did not believe it and she doubted it, yet when she saw it with her own eyes, she accepted it. She believed it. She grasped it. And she told Solomon, they didn't tell me the half. They didn't tell me half of it. No, oh, I think about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and when a man hears the gospel, uh, he can believe it and accept it. Uh, or he can cast it aside and reject it. Uh, but my friend, to those who accept it, uh, they come in uh, and they feel the glory of God and the redeeming power of his blood. And they come away saying the half's not been told. The half's not been told. There's so much more to tell. I often think of doubting Thomas as he is referred to in the instance when the Lord had resurrected. He was not with the disciples, but Jesus appeared in their midst. 
And as he was rejoined with the disciples later, and they were telling him, oh, how beautiful it was. Jesus was here. And he said, I won't believe it. Uh, I won't believe it unless I can see him with my own eyes and thrust my hand in his side. See the nail prints in his hand. I will not believe. But there was another day, not many days hence, that Jesus appeared again. And Thomas this time was there. And Jesus called his name Thomas. Thomas. Oh, there's something about when the Lord calls your name. There's no question who it is. You know his voice if you're his sheep. And he simply replied, my Lord and my God. The Lord told him, be not faithless, but believing, believing. And so Jesus spoke to those that day about those who, though they did not believe, yet they would still consider. And I believe that he shared with them another illustration there when he began to tell them about Jonah and Nineveh. In verse 32, he said, The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. I feel like that he preached to them about another segment of people, and that was those who believe. Those who believe. And if you would share with me a few minutes the story of Jonah... You all know how that the call of God came to him. And the first thing that he did is say, who, me? Why, something's wrong. And he began to flee from the calling of God. Young man, young woman, do never flee from the calling of God. There is nothing higher, nothing grander, nothing greater than the calling of Jesus Christ upon our lives. Uh, if Jonah would have simply realized that the God that called him uh, was able to prepare him and send him, he would have gone. But Jonah began to look at himself. Friend, don't look at yourself. Uh, you're not worthy. You're not capable. But if you'll put your hand in one who bore it all, if you put your hand in the nail-scarred hand, he's able to keep you. He's able to take you to the calling uh, of his choosing. Don't question the calling of God. And I read this afternoon from Jonah chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, concerning the thing that the Lord spoke to those Jews about that day. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose, went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He entered into the city of Nineveh, and he began to do what God called him to do. And that was simply to preach the gospel, to preach the word that God had given to him. And that word given to Jonah was that he was going to destroy them unless they repented. And so he began to preach it. Forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He went to the rich. He went to the poor. He went up and down the streets of Nineveh and he proclaimed the gospel. But in verse 5, I believe we find the key for the reason that Jesus even brought up Nineveh and brought up Jonah to share with those Jews to whom he spoke. And it's found in verse 5 there. So the people of Nineveh believed God. They simply believed. They dispelled all of Jonah's fears, the things that he was afraid of. They dispelled him when they simply repented. Hallelujah. Sometimes God calls us to do something and we think, dear God, I can't do that. We're like Moses, uh, tongue-tied, I can't do that. Yes, you can. I've called you to do it. Uh, and if you'll go in the name of the Lord, I'm here to tell you there's not enough devils in hell to keep you from doing it. Hallelujah. 
If you go by yourself, my friend, you'll come back by yourself. He won't go with you, but if you'll go in the Lord, he will protect you. What did they do? They questioned him. No. They cast him out of the city because he's a false prophet. No. They believed God and proclaimed a fast and they put on sackcloth. Hallelujah. Some folks say they believe, but they don't do anything about it. Amen. Hallelujah. I know these folks believe because they did something. They changed their ways. They put off the sinful living that they were partaking of. Dressed themselves in sackcloth. Uh, from the greatest of them even to the least. And then we find that even in verse 6, the king. Stripped off that royal robe and put on those sackcloth and ashes. They believed God. And Jesus Christ said, the queen of Sheba, the queen of the south, is going to stand before you Jews at the judgment. Uh, they're going to stand shoulder to shoulder with you. And they're going to condemn you because even though she did not believe, she went. And then she later believed after she saw and he said, those uh, men of Ninevite are going to rise up. They'll stand beside you at the judgment. Why? Because when the gospel was preached to them, they simply believed. They believed. I think of Cornelius' house and how they were so hungry for the gospel. And they sent for one called Simon Peter. And Peter came even though it was against the law. And he shared the simplicity of the gospel of God with them. And while he had spake the words, they began to speak in other tongues and magnify God. The Holy Ghost fell on them. He said, can any man forbid water that these should be baptized? Uh, same as we uh, hallelujah Amen. hallelujah oh there's something about hunger that just pulls it out of the preacher Amen. praise God it just drains him Amen. he can preach when you're hungry Amen. hallelujah he can load the table if you're hungry praise God Amen. they believed they believed they just believed but then we find the third classification of those and he really didn't talk about them, for he spoke to them. And that was those of which many stood before him were a part of, who would not believe regardless of what would happen. They wouldn't believe if he called fire down from heaven. They wouldn't believe if he raised the dead. They wouldn't believe if he healed the sick. How do I know? Because he did it and they didn't believe. They wouldn't believe nothing could make them believe they were those that I feel that he implied to them or of them, those who would not believe regardless of circumstance or what would happen among them. They would not believe. The Bible tells us that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Uh, he made the world. He made all that was made. Wasn't anything made without him. And the world knew him not. They wouldn't believe. They were so hard set and fast uh, in their man-made religion and doctrines uh, that they wouldn't believe. Uh, nothing could change them or turn them around. And I believe with all of my heart he recognized that when he spoke to him. But he still loved him. Enough to stand up over Jerusalem and weep his heart out. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How oft you've rejected me. How often I've made myself available to you and yet you would not believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we find here a very intricate message I feel and I want to preach now that's just the foundation I want to preach praise God he spoke there in the 29th verse to those he said this is an evil generation because they seek a sign but then he said there shall be no sign given it but 
the sign of Jonas the prophet. And if you will think for a little while about the queen of the south that I've talked to you about. If you'll think just a few minutes about Jonah and Nineveh and what they did when Jonah preached to them. I think you will see the key to that verse of scripture there. Uh, simply stated, I feel that that side of Jonah is this. Uh, Jonah preached what God gave him. Uh, men believed and repented uh, and God confirmed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jonah preached, uh, men repented, uh, and God confirmed. Uh, oh, my dear friend, this morning, uh, gospel preacher of the word, uh, why is it uh, that it seems like every time we step behind this sacred desk, uh, we feel compelled, uh, we feel obligated uh, that we've got to preach something different uh, than this has ever been preached before? Hallelujah. I still believe that the simple preaching uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ will save the lost. Hallelujah. 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 Paul before the Corinthian church uh, said, I have determined uh, not to know anything among you. Uh, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh, the simplicity uh, of the gospel the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't believe we have to produce something fancy, something newfangled, something unusual, something supernatural, something different from the Word of God. Solomon said it, and he was so wise. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new and here we go, looking for some new idea, some new doctrine, some new uh, fanciful message or sermon. Oh, but I'm going to tell you folks today, I believe God is calling young men and young women to work for him that will preach, that will live to the fullest of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not another gospel. Hallelujah. He said, though it be an angel from heaven, come preaching any other gospel to you other than that that I have preached to you. Let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Do you believe we're living in them today? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, Amen. without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Uh, hallelujah. I believe we've got the form and we've got the power. Hallelujah. Some have a little bit of a form, but they have denied the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't ever doubt it. Uh, we have had our opportunities to go with the world. We've had our opportunities to go with them if we wanted to. Hallelujah. The early turn of this century, uh, it was good men. It was godly men uh, that got up in that, that assembly uh, of the assemblies of God uh, when they began to sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, uh, Blessed Trinity. Uh, and they got to their feet uh, and they left. Uh, because they loved the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection. Hallelujah. They loved it too much to stay with those who would not live it, who would not preach it, who would not love it. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning 
and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, always learning, uh, smart, uh, professing themselves to be wise, they have become fools. Uh, because though they are always learning, uh, though they're always coming up uh, with some great idea, with some glorious sounding message, uh, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the simple truth. Hallelujah. There's nothing more beautiful than the simplicity of just gospel that we preach. Uh, they're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jannies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. They resist it because they do not love it. Uh, they resist it because they have not obtained it. Because they do not glory in it. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Then I want to skip down to verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. If this was in his day, how much more in this day? We're looking at the ushering in of the bride of, uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, the bridegroom to receive his bride. Uh, we're looking at his soon return. I believe it with all of my heart. Uh, we're living in perilous days. Uh, but continue, the apostle said to Timothy, Thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, you can be assured in the gospel. The gospel will never fail you uh, the news of Jesus Christ will never fall to or fail be assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of God uh, not one or two verses uh, not a few verses where you like it uh, and leave a few verses out where you don't uh, where it fits you where it, but where it doesn't fit uh, you step out of the shoe uh, it's all good uh, for doctrine uh, for reproof uh, for correction uh, for instruction in righteousness hallelujah hallelujah the problem is some folks have got the idea that all the word of God is for is to lift us up into the mountaintops listen friend sometimes it's to reprove you to rebuke you to Give you correction and sound instruction for righteousness. Hallelujah. If you don't have holiness, you'll not see God. For without holiness, no man shall see the law. We need instruction for righteousness. Uh, that's the righteousness of Jesus Christ shining through us. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And then he continues on in chapter 4 in the same vein of thought. And I read four verses there. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead as is appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Hallelujah. Preach the word. Preach the word. Gospel preacher, preach the word. Hallelujah. Stories are nice. Uh, Songs uh, add so much to the worship of the service. Uh, but preach the word. Hallelujah. Stand for the gospel uh, of God. Be instant in season out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine has become a dirty word among many. Oh, listen, my friend. Uh, I believe in love. I believe love is one of the principles of God. Love is so great. Even to the place that the apostle Paul elevated love above faith and hope. Yes, it did. First Corinthians 13. Now abideth these three, faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity. He was talking about love. And love is great. But I'm going to tell you, if you love, you'll preach the truth. If you love the souls of men to whom you minister, you'll preach the word. You'll preach the truth. If your preacher loves you, he'll tell you what you need to do to be saved. If your preacher cares for you, he'll preach the truth to you. Hallelujah. Don't tell me you love somebody and then tell them some way other than the gospel. You don't love them. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
It's that simple. Hallelujah. Keep my word. Keep my commandments. He elevated and related his word so greatly to his very principle and being that he said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Uh, that's how much this word means. Uh, hey, wait a minute. You aren't talking about this? No. I'm talking about the ideas uh, that this represents. Uh, this is the representation of God to you. Uh, it represents all that he is. Uh, all that he wants to be. Uh, all that he will be if you'll let him. The word of Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. For time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't endure it. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers. Have an itch and ears. Uh, the teachers didn't have itch and ears. Uh, the pupils had itch and ears. Uh, they wanted to hear something uh, that sounded good. Uh, something that flowed smoothly. Uh, and the words I tell you this afternoon, uh, they may be rough. Uh, and they may not be smooth. Uh, and I may not be an orator. Uh, but I'm going to tell you uh, that it is the truth of God's yeah. word, the doctrine, uh, that will save you. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables because they didn't love it. Because they did not love it, they did not like it. Oh, we need to be careful when the holy things of God become common. Oh, we need to be careful when holy things of God become common. Uh, when men in the Old Testament became weary of sacred things of God, when they became common to them, they built a golden calf. Because uh, it's tired of worshiping a God you couldn't see. Uh, so they poured them up one they could see. Uh, they got tired uh, of holy things. Uh, they got tired of that uh, which was sacred and they allowed it to become common to themselves. Uh, when they allowed the sacred things of God to become common to them, they mishandled the ark. Uh, they didn't carry it right. They'd be going along. Uh, somebody would see it swaying there and they'd reach over to stop the sway uh, and they would die. Listen, my friend, uh, we're still carrying the ark. Uh, praise God. We are carrying the ark. Uh, it's the word of Jesus Christ. Uh, and when you become familiar uh, with sacred things so much uh, that they become common to you uh, and they don't mean anything to you like they used to, uh, you will begin to mishandle the ark uh, that we as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ have been ordained to carry. Hallelujah. God may not strike you down dead uh, for mishandling the ark, uh, but when you do, uh, you die spiritually. Uh, you lose every ounce uh, of hope you ever had uh, when you begin to mishandle holy things of God. Hallelujah. When spiritual things become common, uh, men begin to make money in the church. Just like when Jesus came in and overthrew their tables and drove them from the house of God because they made the house of the Lord a den of thieves. That's when holy things become common to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 1 verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word. Holding fast the faithful word. As he hath been taught that he may be able to by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince uh, the gainsayers uh, in Jude 3 and 4. Jude 3 and 4, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, uh, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, for there are certain men crept in unawares uh, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Uh, ungodly men uh, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness uh, and denying the only Lord God. God uh, and our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I exhort you, uh, I tell you, uh, contend earnestly for the faith uh, which was once delivered to the saints. Uh, contend for the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, contend for the word of God. Uh, there is no other saving manner or method in this world today. Uh, men are trying their own way to get there. Uh, but unless they go by the book, uh, they're going to be lost. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Preach the word. Preach the word. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 10 and 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Uh, we've got to have more than just the truth. Uh, we've got to have a love for this word. Uh, we've got to have a love for truth, uh, because truth saves. John 8 and 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, Romans 1 and 16, uh, we read, uh, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first uh, and also to the Gentile. It's not how many things you can come up with uh, out of the word of God. Uh, it's how strongly, uh, how beautifully you can outline uh, the that death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. And that's going to be the thing that saves you in the end. Is his word. Hallelujah. The sign of Jonas was that he preached. They believed and repented and God confirmed. And I'm going to tell you that the world, though they look for signs and want something here, or they're going to look there. Or if they don't find what they want there, they'll go somewhere else. But the only sign you have, the only sign you'll ever have is the preaching of God's ministry, the preaching of the word of God, the obedience of hearts that are pricked and touched, and the confirmation of God Almighty Upon the blessing of his word. It still works. Uh, preach Acts 2.38. Uh, they'll still pray through. Uh, they'll still speak in tongues. Uh, they'll still get baptized in Jesus name. It still works. Uh, it has not lost its touch. Uh, it has not lost its flair. It has not lost its power. It's the power of God unto salvation. Praise Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Is true. together right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 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 